Welcome to another MTG Mox Box video, your destination for Magic the Gathering box breaks and more. If you like what we do, please support us by participating in our box breaks. You can find us on our website mtgmoxbox.com or through our listings on eBay under seller handle MTG Mox Box. You can also find us on social media in the links in the description below and watch us play Magic on Twitch under MTG Mox Box. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think. Hello, welcome back to MTG Mox Box, and we have another episode of Top 2, and this time we have the new set that's coming out. Uh, Streets Street of New Capenna. Yep, alright, so this is Joseph. This is Tony. This is Lawrence. And again, we'll be going over our Top 2 based on the slot star offer for this set. And for this set, um, due to the low number of artifacts, colorless, and also lands, we're going to combine colorless and land into a slot. So we will have the usual five slots plus multicolor plus colorless and land as one slot. So a total of seven. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to do something different. So on this one, because of the uh, heavy use of uh, multicolor cards, we did notice that they have one set of uh, uh, multicolor cards that uses hybrid mana symbols. Uh, so we are actually going to pull those out since those have the capability of being cast as a monocolored uh, uh, card, uh, we'll pull those out and put those into the uh, the each of their respective colored slots. So those five cards are Evelyn the Covetous, Ginny Fay, Jetmere Second, Agnes Dragon Slash, Rigo Streetwise Mentor, and Toulouse Clever Conductor. So each of those is going to follow into the uh, the one that's non hybrid. So for example, Evelyn the Covetous is going to be uh, going into the black slot uh, because one of the uh, mana symbols is black and the other two are hybrid and then so on and so forth for the others cool and we will um, again include this description in our listings both on ebay uh, you can find us under seller handle mtg mox box and we will uh, put it on there that these five cards will be going to their respective uh, monocolor slot and we'll also include that in our um, listing on our site at mtgmoxbox.com as well all right all right so I guess without further ado, let's start with white. Yep, that's our first slot. Uh, Tony, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. All right. So white has some interesting cards. White ha has been having interesting cards in the past few sets, I feel. Uh, but for this one, what really excited me uh, when she was first revealed, uh, my top pick is going to be Giada, Font of Hope, mm. <laughs> the legendary creature angel for one and a white. Broken. I am. I mean, I'm just happy that Angel Tribal finally has a, a commander that they can, uh, th that provides decent support for, for the tribe. So she has 2-2 Flying Vigilance. Each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. And you can also tap her to add white and spend this mana only to cast an angel spell. So definitely designed for Angel Tribal it seems, but... Uh, looking forward to try to see what I can build around her. All right, that was my first pick. Second pick, I'm gonna go with Extraction Specialist. So this is a two and a white, three two human rogue with life link. And then with it, when Extraction Specialist enters the battlefield, you return target creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and that creature can't attack or block for as long as you control Extraction Specialist. So this is interesting. It's kind of like a uh, Re recursion spell in white um, that can pull back a, like a utility creature. So my first thought was, you know, Esper Sentinel. Oh god. <laughs> if it, you know, it, someone's probably going to try to remove it and, you know, if it's in the graveyard, it has mana value 2 or less. This is a way to bring it back and can, almost kind of protect it. You can bring back uh, Jada as well, man. <laughs> you could, actually. Uh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. 2 or less. Energy, so. Yep. And, you know, some other picks, like Dranath Magistrate, or like, you know, any of the utility creatures that White has a lot of that are usually one or two CMC, like Mother of Runes, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, where they don't really need to attack or block, this is a good card to kind of bring them back. Selfless Squire? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, no, I think that one is CMC 4. That's oh, really big. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I hate that card. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's my top two picks. Who wants to go next? Uh, I can go next. Uh, right. My One of my picks is also Jada, Font of Hope. You know, it's good to see some angel support. 
the other card I pick is Sanctuary Warden. It's a four colorless and white white, a angel soldier, so it might fit with Jada pretty well. Uh, it comes into play with uh, two shield counters, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may review, uh, remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker you control. If you do draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. So I um, really like these type of cards that, you know, when it enter enters battlefield, something happens. I think it will pair well with, um, you know, from uh, Avengers and Forgotten Realm, teleport Teleportation Circle. Where at the beginning of your end step, you can exile one artifact or creature and then kind of blink it into play. So it kind of triggers uh, uh, Sanctuary Warden's ability where you can get a creature and also draw a card. So anytime there's a white card draw, I always like that. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's it for mine. All right. I picked something else. I picked um, Halo Fountain. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, two white artifact. Uh, you pay one white. You tap it. You can untap a tap creature you control. Get a 1-1 one, one green white citizen creature token. You can do the same thing with two white mana. It's just that you have to untap two tap creatures and you draw a card. You pay five white. You tap it. You get to untap 15 tap creatures <laughs> and you win the game. Uh, so this plays to the white tribal weenie creatures oh, yes. to create as many 1-1s one, or 2-2s. Two little creatures as possible in Gold Rise strategy. <laughs> um, and it goes with the next card that I picked, which is Rabble Rousing. Oh, yes. Um, basically the mob. <laughs> <laughs> it is an enchantment that costs four and a white. Hide away five, which means when an enchantment enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, exile one face down, uh, then put the rest of the at the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, whenever you attack with one or more creatures, create that many 1-1 one, one green-white citizen creature tokens. Ooh, so many. Yeah, suddenly you have <laughs> a lot more citizens uh, than before. Then if you control 10 or more uh, creatures, you get to play that exile card without paying its mana cost. Oh, yeah. So free Goes spells. Well <laughs> yeah. Free spells, you and, get more citizens. Yep. Nice. Free spells and token generation. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. And anything else to add for white, or are you guys good? I'm Those good. are definitely the top picks. Okay, uh, let's go to blue. I guess, Tony, you want to go first this time? Yeah, sure, I'll go first. So my first pick on this one is Reservoir Kraken. So this is a 2 blue blue for a 6-6 six, six Kraken with Trample and Ward 2. And at the beginning of each combat, if Reservoir uh, Kraken is untapped, any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. And if they do, you can tap Reservoir Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one blue fish creature token. With this creature can't be blocked. So the reason why I picked this one was uh, I recently put together an Octavia... Uh, uh, I forgot her name. But she's the octopus that basically turns uh, creatures into 8-8s oh, yeah. by casting instants and sorceries. So I figure this way is you'll win either way. You either get a 6-6 six, six Kraken... Or you get a 1-1 one, one unblockable fish that you can turn into an 8-8 eight, eight anyway. Uh, so it just seems like a good um, good in, in, uh, inclusion into that deck, which I'm still tweaking around. So the second Those pick... sneaky fish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm liking the fish in this set uh, because they have a couple cards that uh, create fish tokens. So curious to see how that plays out. Yeah. All right. Second one is Errant, Errant comma Street Artist. So I guess Errant is her name. Errant, yeah. Yeah, because she's legendary. So zero three human rogue. Like only costs one blue. She has flash, defender, and haste. Um, and then she has another ability where you pay one and a blue and you tap it. You create, you can copy target spell you control that wasn't cast. And then you may choose new targets for the copy. So I guess anything with like Magecraft or I think recently, what was it, Lithoform Engine? Just so many different ways of copying spells. So this is basically just another option of copying, but it's you know at the baseline it's you know one one mana to flash in the defender if you really need to chump block something you know that's like bare minimum of what this creature can do. So I when just, it says copy target spell you you control that wasn't cast, so you you can copy yeah copy of a spell right. Right. So okay. there's so many different ways that blue uh, blue copies spells, so you can use any of those. Uh, uh, like copy type spells 
Uh, Magecraft, I think, uh, is one of them. I think what what are those the demonstration ones from Strixhaven? Yeah. Um, where you where, where, where you, where you can copy, give the option yep, to, to copy, copy and a, choose a spell. new target. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those are just a couple of things off the top of my head. I'm sure there's going to be more. And uh, you know, anyone remembers anything else, feel free to leave a comment for us. So this is a second level of copy. This is like copy of a copy. Right. Exactly. So it, not that, not all that useful by itself, but well, if you're copying, it, it should work with those storms type of. Spells, right? right, yeah. When you storm it, it you yeah. copy one of the storm copies. Oh, yeah. that's, too, right? that's also where Exactly. Yeah, so, I forgot about storm. Yep. Cool. So I think there's ways to abuse it. We just haven't uh, explored it. Yeah, I haven't thought all the way through yet. I'm sure someone's going to find a way to break it. Got it. All right, what do you guys? What did you guys go with? Got it. So you next? Um, I pick Ledge Shredder. Uh, one blue bird <laughs> advisor. Um, flying and whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, Ledge Shredder connives. So connives is a new ability. I had to look it up. Uh, draw a card, then discard a card. If you discard a non-land card, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on the creature. So it's not as useful, I think, at the beginning of the game, but like towards mid to end game, if you have like a lot of lands in your hand, you don't really care or you've had like a lot of spells that you can't really cast um you want this creature to get bigger then you put a plus one plus one creature on it but if you want to draw or discard a card to thin out your library at the beginning of the game i think that's very helpful so um yeah just trying to see if this ability will work or not um it I seems think, interesting yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll play pair well with black where you have a graveyard recursion so you yeah. purposely discard something into your graveyard so you can bring it back in a cheap way, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's also yeah. very helpful. Yeah, I definitely like the connive uh, ability just because it allows you to dig deeper into your library for solutions. Right. Right. So anytime you're, you're like you you're holding something in your hand that you don't need right now, you know, connive allows you to you know just throw it away for something. It's almost like cycling, right? It's just it is almost like little, cycling. A little bit different. You get a little bit more benefit. I feel. Like. Yeah, it, potentially. Yeah. You can make it into a madness deck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, synergize with many other yeah. abilities as well. So. Um, the next one is that I really like is Cut Your Losses. Uh, <laughs> four blue blue, casualty two. As you cast a spell, you can sacrifice a creature with power two or greater. If you do copy the spell, and you may choose new target for the oh, copy. Hey, another way of yep. copying spells. There we go. <laughs> target player mills half the library, rounded down. <laughs> Jesus. So if you copy it, you're basically you basically and they have an even library. You're milling the entire library if you target both. Yes, this to... is related to the commander that uh, I chose for uh, commander pageant. So coming up, coming up soon. Little, little preview. Yeah. <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> oh, you go, Joseph. All, All right. right, so I pick Reservoir Kraken as well. The other card I pick is Wire Tapping. So it's a four and a blue to cast enchantment. It has Hideaway five. Uh, hideaway is basically saying when this enchantment enters the battlefield look at the top five cards of your library exile one face down then put the rest on the bottom in a random order and uh, main ability is whenever you draw your first card during each of your draw set draw a card then if you have nine or more cards in your hand you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost so i just it think that easy. hey yeah it's a, <laughs> Wait a minute <laughs> it's a Blue, you know, a, a new way for blue to draw more cards, which is always welcome for blue. I think blue, <laughs> well, has, blue has too many, right? <laughs> yeah. And there's also a way to, you know, there's a lot of... Um, blue has some powerful spells that are uh, have a lot of ma mana costs. High CMC, so this might be a way of cheating it out that without paying it, you know, the entire mana cost. Yep. Nice. Blue is very good at that, too. Yes. Yep. And that is it. All right. All right. Just a quick question. How did, What was your reasoning for picking the Kraken? My Kraken? Yeah. Oh, the we. Oh, I just thought because it's four to cast, you know, a six in creature, you know, it's like um, War 2, so it's hard to get rid of, right? So yeah. people had to pay a tax to if you want to target it or do something. That's true. So it was like, hey, if you don't want to get hit in the face by a 6-6 six, six trample, you know, hey, tap your creature, slows your opponent down, and I actually get a 1-1 one, one blue fish creature that's unblockable <laughs> that might be, uh, I might throw into the, the ninja frog oh, deck, right? For unblockable creature and uh, ninjutsu. Okay, okay. In. Yeah. I can see the synergy there. <laughs> ah. Terrible idea, though. Terrible. Yeah. You face me, you force me to, to uh, steal my beans. Yeah. You force my hand on this. <laughs> Your evil plan has been exposed. <laughs> Dang. Uh, right. Let's go to black, I guess. Black, sure. Uh, who wants to go first? Joseph, you want to start sure, first? Sure, I can go first. So I picked, uh, my first one is Angel of Suffering. It's a three and a black black, black, black to cast a Nightmare Angel. 
flying. If damage will be dealt to you, prevent that damage and mill twice that many cards. Hey, Ooh. milling. Yeah, so it's <laughs> self milling. Uh, self, self milling. So black is always welcome. You know, putting things in your graveyard to and you know be able to bring it back. But I also thought it was uh, a good way to uh, pair it with um, Cemetery Tampering, which is my second card. Mm. Uh, it's a two and a black uh, to cast enchantment. Hide away five again. When this enchantment enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, exile one face down, then put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Um, the card reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill three cards. Then if there are 20 or more cards in your graveyard, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. Ah. So again, as a, a way to cheat out your stuff, so I think they both uh, pair well with each other since you know they're both helping you mill and fill your graveyard so you can cast something out, You know, hopefully using some sort of graveyard recursion with black. Then also uh, cast that uh, the exile card for free. Free spell and prevent damage. That's pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So those are my two. Uh, who wants to go next? All right. I picked also <laughs> cemetery uh, tampering. Um, uh, you guys like the hideaway stuff. <laughs> we do like the hideaway <laughs> stuff. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the second card I picked is Shakedown Heavy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Because I, I really like the name. Yeah. <laughs> um, Menace to well, Black. I like the ability too. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Whenever Shakedown Heavy attacks, defending player can have you draw a card. If they do, untap Shakedown Heavy and remove it from combat. <laughs> because uh, look at the flavor text. <laughs> look, we both got what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I get your Halo and you get to keep your kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, good old fashioned bullying. Shakedown. Good old yeah, shakedown. Good old fashioned shakedown. All right. Why don't you go to you, Tony? All right. I, I did also pick Shakedown <laughs> Heavy for pretty much the exact same reason. Definitely hold, looking forward to using that I all offer over you, you Yes. The offer you can't resist. <laughs> <laughs> which is another card that was in the set, which is amazing. Anyway, uh, so my other pick was um, Cut of the Profits. So this is the uh, black X spell. So it's X black black for sorcery with casualty three. So you, as you cast the spell, you can sacrifice a creature with power three or greater. And then you can copy the spell if you do that. So you can draw X cards and lose X life. Uh, I just think it's an interesting take for this with set, the set's uh, ability, uh, including casualty. My thinking was to include this into like Zaxar, which cares about X spells. And then if it makes oh. a bunch of tokens, I can just sacrifice one of them and double up the... Yeah. Amount of cards I draw. Hey, it'll so. work well with your uh, street artist. Oh, yes. <laughs> More synergy. Stop. <laughs> yeah, saying that uh, the Shakedown Heavy uh, is a warrior. My, uh, my oh. attitude to Gila, you know. <laughs> so many options. But yeah, that, those were my top picks for Black. I guess uh, you can call him a warrior. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't look like one to me. Okay. I don't um, care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on to Red. Yep. Uh, Lawrence, Next. you want to go first this time? Uh, yeah. So I picked... Okay, I, at first I didn't know why this card was so good. And then I, I dug a little deeper. Arcane Bombardment. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, it's so broken. <laughs> it's actually very, very broken. Uh, enchantment for Red Red. Whenever you cast your first instant of sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant of sorcery card at random from your graveyard, then copy each card exile with each, Arcane yeah. Bombardment. Keyword. Card, keyword is each there. You may cast any number of copies without paying their mana cost. Street artist. So the yeah, the key term is each card. Yeah, you copy so it, it just keeps building and building if it stays on. on and, and if you want to choose specific cards at the beginning, like a super high CMC spell, and just put it there, mm -hmm. even though it's random, it's yeah. still gonna be that spell. So it's like more ways for gambling. <laughs> so it's it's Gambling in your favor. Yeah, gambling in your favor <laughs> with your rigged favor gambling. Time, yeah? <laughs> it's rigged gambling. <laughs> uh, in the house. <laughs> and like like you said, partner with all the storm spells, right? You can just keep on doing it. Oh yeah. Uh, many ways to break this already. I, I don't yeah. think I need to go any uh, further. Yeah. Um, the second card I pick is <laughs> again. I, I, like, I like the name. Yeah. Professional face breaker. Oh yes. Oh shoot! I like it. It's, it's a it's a good occupation yeah. <laughs> in the streets. Uh, <laughs> two in red, human warrior menace. Whenever one or more creature you control deal damage to a player, you get a treasure token. 
you know, because you hit people and they give you money. Yeah. <laughs> Where my money? Yeah. Uh, sacrifice a treasure. You can exile the top card of your library. You can play it this turn. Nice. Definitely need to put that title into your LinkedIn. Professional <laughs> face breaker. We're going to nickname this car Stewie. <laughs> Where's my money? Yeah. Where's my money, Brian? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Joseph, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, I picked Arcane Bombardment as well. Oh, yes. Uh, my second card is Jaxus, the Troublemaker. <laughs> it's a three and a red to cast legendary human warrior red tap discard a card create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control it gains haste and when this creature dies draw a card sacrifice at the beginning of your next end step and activate only as a sorcery you may blitz it with one and a red if you cast a spell for its blitz cost it gains haste and when this creature dies draw a card sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step mm. so, oh shit sure. okay um, I think good. it's pretty cool because it's um seems like it's almost like a no weakness or oh, sorry I should say weakness no uh, drawback no drawback yeah. red card draw from that's really know, in my mind so I think red is always lacking some sort of card draw yeah you know you always have to draw and then discard but this one seems like you're just drawing so yeah, yeah. I like it that is and true. also uh, the artwork reminds me of uh, what's her name in Arcane. <laughs> Uh, the uh, boxer lady? Vi? Vi? Uh, vi. Yeah, yeah, Vi. Whatever. Vi. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yep. All right, nice. Tony. All right. So, let's see. What did I go with? So, I went... Well, one of my picks was Structural Assault. So, it's three red, red sorcery. This is the new board wipe, I guess, for red. And I guess what it is is you destroy all artifacts, and then Structural Assault deals damage to each creature... Equal to the number of artifacts that were put into graveyards from the battlefield this turn. Holy moly. So, when you think about it, it's a combination of basically Vandal Blast and Blasphemous Act, right? Because you're destroying all artifacts. Uh, and then you're using them to deal and damage. And then the number of artifacts destroyed. But it also includes treasures getting sacked and things like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, to do a whole ton of damage oh, to all. forgot treasure is yeah, an so artifact. Treasure is, oh. you know, like any other... Because it doesn't, the they, artifact doesn't have to be destroyed by this. Yeah, it doesn't have to be destroyed. It's it, like during the turn, Damn. from the battle during the I turn. Forgot. So very interesting board wipe that you know just to give Red another option of destroying things. So very hmm. probably going to see a lot you know in hmm. Commander games with this card. Hmm. Add to cart. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of my picks. My next one is Horde Holler. <laughs> so this is a uh, vehicle. I don't usually pick vehicles, but this one seemed really. Like, you know, it seemed like a good return. So, three and a red for a 5-5 five, five vehicle with Trample. Whenever Horde Hollard deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token for each artifact they control. Oh, again. So, yeah, not shoot. quite, you know, Dockside Extortionist levels of uh, ridiculousness, but still, you know, you can swing at, you know, any, any player with a bunch of tokens or artifacts. Um, hmm. Unless they, you know, I mean, I, think, I guess they could sack all their artifacts in response, but... You know, then you're just forcing them to waste their artifacts anyway. Or treasures. Yeah, but you'll get treasures regardless. So, uh, so yeah, those are my two picks. Definitely some flavorful or interesting cards in red. Yeah, red is pretty good and inter- yep. interesting. This set. Let's go. I just had to say I had an easier time picking red out yeah. of the previous sets. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's blue is actually hard for me this time. Uh, green. Uh, Joseph, why don't you go first? Sure. My first one's Vivian of the Hunt, which is a four green green uh, legendary planeswalker. Uh, the plus two ability is you may sacrifice a creature if you do search your library for a creature card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's mana value. Put it in a uh, battlefield and shuffle. Another plus one ability says mill five cards and put any number of creature cards milled this way into your yeah. hand. Yeah. Minus one, create a 4 4 green rhino warrior creature token. Interesting. So, uh, I don't even I care like about the... the minus one at this point. <laughs> but those you, two plus abilities. But you can cheat out the, use, use the minus one to cheat out the 5 5. That's right, if you don't have it on the board. No, because it's nope. casting cost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Not, not the, not the, yeah. uh, not the power, power toughness. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, regardless, I, I just feel like this, uh, I always like these type of, um, Creatures or a planeswalker deck and uh, kind of tutor right. creatures out of your library type of thing. Because I think this is the first time it's on a planeswalker. So I think the original effect was birthing pod, where you sacrifice a creature and then you look for one that's yeah, one yeah. greater. And mm-hmm. I think they, it's been done a couple times in a couple different creatures, well, but now it's on a planeswalker. They also had that artifact one. Remember, I was saying the I forgot what's it called already. The green. It's also green. It's right. the one every turn you put a counter on it that you can uh, right. So that's, tap to look for a creature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So those, right. yeah, very good effects. So Vivian the Tutor. Yes, Vivian <laughs> yeah. the Tutor. 
Uh, the next one is uh, Topiary Stomper. <laughs> one okay. green green uh, plant dinosaur. Plant dinosaur, yes. Has vigilance. <laughs> uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card. Put it in the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Uh, it can't attack or block unless you control seven or more lands. So uh, I actually add this to this uh, our Commander Pageant series where we're going to talk about a, a deck that I'm building that has landfall. So I actually oh, yeah. think it works pretty well because I also have a... Uh, there's also these landfall creatures that create plant tokens. Oh, so, right. so this of... is also a plant. It's a plant dinosaur. Oh, so yes. theoretically, when you put a land down, you can actually give this plant dinosaur plus one plus one counters. Yeah, like ah. Avenger of Zendikar or something like that. Yep, you growing yeah. this plant. I see. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Good uh, picks. Tony, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So my first pick is Bootlegger Stash. Oh, uh, yes. This artifact oh, is insane. God. So five and a green artifact. <laughs> Lands you control have tapped to create a treasure token. This is insane. So not only does it, it effectively manifests all your lands, right? Uh, but the fact that it's creating a token, you know, all you have to do is add a couple of uh, token doublers, right? Was it parallel lives, doubling season, anything of that sort, and yeah, you're, you're just you're doubling your lands. Yeah, you're doubling your land or doubling or your mana, mana base. Add in any untapping <sighs> shenanigans, right? Like uh, Seaborn Muse, right, or yep. something like that. Um, and yeah, like it's like it just feels like this card is one step away from going infinite really what, what easily. What is that other artifact? Something man- <laughs> manufacturer or something like that? Oh, Academy, Academy manufacturer. manufacturer. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> just tripling out your. Yeah. Oh my god. So many treasure. So you get ways. a food. You get a clue. Yeah. So yes, there's the. I... You get a clue. You get a clue. Everybody gets a clue. <laughs> you get food. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely one to watch out for. This one's I'm guessing is going to be expensive. It's already expensive. Yep. <laughs> All right, next pick is Evolving Door. It's a nice pun on the uh, revolving door there. <laughs> Another artifact, two in a green. And this is a little bit similar to Viv- uh, Vivian, but um, where you're paying one and tapping it and sacrificing a creature, count the colors of the sacrificed creature, and then you search your library for a creature card that's exactly that many colors plus one. And then you exile and shuffle, and then you may cast the exiled card. Activate only as a sorcery. You do have to pay for it, but it is a way to kind of step up into if you're playing like a five color deck, right? And you want to, you know, like slivers or something like that. You know, two color sliver go into a three color, four color, all the way up to like silver queen or you know whatever. So it's not mana cost. It's actually it's number no, of colors. Yeah, yeah, it's a a little bit different effect, right? It's not like mana value. Is it color identity or actually the mana number of mana symbols? Symbols, uh, I, I believe symbols. That many colors, so yeah. it's based on so usually that's equivalent, right? Number of different mana symbols is different uh, colors. Okay, but yeah, I I think this one's useful for uh, for for multicolored decks if you're trying to bring out something with multiple color, you know which is this set, set anyways it's, it's right I think it was designed for this yeah. set but just yeah. like just thinking from a commander perspective in, in, so you're looking saying at if you sure. sacrifice Tutoring. a green creature mono green you can theoretically look at a two color creature right yep. your green Bottom. creature becomes you know like red yeah, and white I'm, I'm or liking, you know whatever I'm liking all this casino thing man it's like yeah. Yeah. color me up <laughs> uh, yes it is yeah. so. Very interesting. Oh, not quite as broken as you know Vivian or you know some of the other effects, but I, I just like the effect because it's unique. I, I don't think there's any other. I, I don't think we've seen a card that does this specific uh, yeah. way of tutoring. Before. And it's really good for multicolor deck, like you right, said. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of a narrow case, but when it when it fits that case, right. this, this will probably benefit a lot of those god thing decks too, right? Because uh, devotion. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. Definitely. You can, you can actually look for you know. More the devotion. Right, yeah, you're, you're lacking yeah. on a certain color for yeah. devotion or something like that. Yeah. So. That's pretty cool. Yep, very interesting. All right. Um, Who hasn't gone yet? I think uh, you guys already talked about it. Yeah. I also picked Bootlegger <laughs> Slash oh, yes. and Vivian on the Hunt because I you know, yeah. like those, those cards. Are good cards. Those though. are good cards. <laughs> All right. So Let's move on yeah, to Multicolor. Multi? All right. Uh, yeah. Lawrence, you want to go for this? Uh, okay. Ob Nixilis. Ob Nixilis. The yeah, Adversary. Um, okay. Also, I thought, I was like, oh, this card didn't seem that good at first. <laughs> but no, 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 no. It's also very broken. Um, <laughs> you can basically get a copy, uh, a, a casually X. Um, the copy isn't legendary and has starting loyalty X. So uh, two copies of him, right? So, right. As you cast a spell, you can sacrifice a creature of power X. When you do copy the spell, the copy becomes a token. 
So the coffee can be a big giant creature. Oh, I see. Holy so basically, sh- you're able to use his ultimate right away. Correct. You can do that right away, and you can also, um, yeah, cheat out oh. another up, Nexilis, uh, which has these ability as well. Right. Um, and then you can also choose to copy because it is, isn't legendary and do shenanigans with it. Oh, like, like copying create and copies of it? copies. Yes. yes. Because it's legendary, so a lot of rules doesn't apply anymore. Right. Very interesting. Um, but anyways, the other ability, the plus one is each opponent lose two life unless they discard a card. If you control a demon or devil, you gain two life. Okay. Uh, minus two is create one one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Okay. And minus seven target player draw seven cards and lose seven life. Pretty so. good. It's uh, good options, especially if you can duplicate. Yeah, yeah. you get yeah, to, He looks like Thanos. <laughs> he does look like Thanos. Wings. <laughs> he is kind of the villain of this set, right? Of the set. And you get two of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, two just, Thanos? Just like, just like Thanos. Right? Just like Thanos. Yeah. Or, yeah. Thanos or whatever. Oh my god! It's like they're just copying Marvel movies. Well, I'm inevitable. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, what was your other right. pick? The second one I picked is um, scheming fence. Ooh, good pick. Uh, Blue, white for a human citizen. No, just a citizen. <laughs> As he enters the battlefield, you can choose a non land permanent. Activated abilities of chosen permanent can't be activated, but Scheming Fence has all the activated abilities of chosen permanent except for loyalty abilities. So you can even make this a choose, this, a, choose a planeswalker. Uh, and oh, you're they, right, because it's a non-land they, permanent. They, they can't use any of their abilities, but I think their lordly counter still works. Yeah. Because it's just that he can't copy it. Uh, you can spam mana. No, 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 because no, no, activated abilities of the chosen permanent can't be activated. So oh, it shuts off so the, even the loyalty and opposing... Uh, yeah, Planeswalker. I, I believe that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, in, 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 if you target a Planeswalker, you're basically locking it out. Uh, it gains those abilities, but it can't activate because it, it, it's not a planeswalker. Yeah. But if you do it to a creature with that activated ability, it basically shuts off the your opponent's one, and then you get a cop, almost like a copy of it. Right. Exactly. Uh, you get a copy of it, and then they get shut out yep. of their own creature, which is nice. Yes. Um, and then this will tie Target into Target the commander. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is a way of blanking out the command without. Without killing them. Without killing them, which is which good, right? Which annoys yeah. them, because then they're like, oh, I, I had the right. commander. Because they can't, can't just recast it. it that way. They have to deal with this one first. And if you copy a Planeswalker, mm-hmm. um, we'll talk about this at the colorless slot. Okay. About the sword. Oh, yes. And that will just be <laughs> super dangerous. <laughs> I actually have a question about this um, scheming fence. Let's just say you do choose my commander. If I sack my commander, recast it, is my commander still frozen? Whew. You can choose a, a non-land permanent. That's interesting because it's not a target. It's you're choosing it because you're not naming. Because you, know you know, someone's saying, "Hey, name a card." Right, that right. Dies, right. So I'm just wondering, like, if you I might say, be able to, yeah, you might be able to sack it in. Because what if I, for example, blink my commander back in? Does mm-hmm. that still? I, I think it doesn't count anymore because you can't. It's not there anymore on the battlefield. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just wondering. Yeah. So yeah, that's a way to get around it. Yeah, right, cool. but still a good effect. I yeah, think still pretty powerful. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, Tony, why don't you go next? Sure. So my, one of my picks was Scheming Fence as well, so we just talked about that. Uh, let's go with my other one. <laughs> I went with Riveteer's Ascendancy. So the drawing's the, pretty funny, man. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, I like how they copied, what, what is it? The, uh, that famous The photo. skyscraper yeah, yeah, building, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. from <laughs> New, York. New York or Chicago, yeah. one of those. But, um, so, yeah, this is part of the, the Ascendancy of you know, the, the five families. I think this is one of the more powerful ones of that, of that group. So on this one, this is the um, so the black, red, and green family. Mm. So the River Tears, I oh. guess. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, you may return oh. target creature card with lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. Oh. You do this only once each turn, but oh, if, as long as you have any kind of sack outlet and just high, C, you know, high enough CMC creatures, like uh, anything, there's just so much anything, value in bringing anything. creatures back. Yeah, once each turn, I mean, it's kind of limiting, but then. Like once is enough. Once is enough. Yeah, like <laughs> if you choose the right creature. Yeah, you choose the right creature. You're going around. You know, uh, in a commander game, that's you know four four, four times a, a round. So yeah. 
That's a. Uh, it seems like there there's ways to take advantage of this. I haven't even thought of the which creatures would benefit or you know what combinations. I just feel like this is a really powerful effect. That, it is. Um, should definitely look into. Yeah, so because uh, now I really want to get that world. What is was that world monger or whatever? World monger. World world order. World uh world, what is that dragon that destroys everything? Uh, exile there. Yeah, or? exile everything. That world, world gorger? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that one's... That like... I can sack it and then bring something back. <laughs> wow. So mean. Yes. Interesting. Because uh... it, it fits the theme of my color of that. Uh, oh, right shoot. Not, none yeah. to see here. None to see here. <laughs> moving right. along. Moving along. Moving along. <laughs> moving along. <laughs> uh, so my choice. Uh, first one is Black Market Tycoon. Green and a red. <laughs> Cat Rogue. At the beginning of your upkeep, Black Market Tycoon deals two damage to you for each treasure you control. You can tap it, create a treasure token. So uh, for my treasure deck, if I don't have to- treasure, I can use this to create some and just need to make sure that I use up all my treasure before, before uh, yeah. it deals damage to me, which yeah, is fine. Um, what a good-looking cat. <laughs> <laughs> Well-dressed. Yes, looks like that cat from uh, the Ghibli movies. <laughs> or looks like the villains from Squid Games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot. No, no, I can't see. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, once you say it, you, you, you can't unsee it, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, the next one is uh, Ziatora, I guess. The, the, yeah. the incinerator. Three black, red, and green legendary demon dragon has Ooh. flying. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, it deals uh, damage equal to that creature's power to any target, and you create three treasure tokens. Dang. Oh, man. So uh, man. I think this is a uh, nice, again, for my treasure dragon deck. Yep. I can theoretically <laughs> sacrifice a dragon, deal damage. Have it come then, back. And create more treasure. Thanks for that uh, Riveteer's Ascendancy. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, not to see there. <laughs> Sack it and bring it back and do it again and get free tre- treasure token. <laughs> Three of them, by the way. That's free mana. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. All right. So man. next to our uh, our seventh slot, which is a uh, So this is going to be plus colors land. and land combined. Yep. Why don't right. you go first, Toby? All right, I'll go first then. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, hinted at this earlier, but uh. Uh, there's not too many options to pick from, but the one option there is is clearly, clearly... Uh, better um, than the rest yeah so that is the better Lux- is an understatement yeah L- Luxior <laughs> Jada's Gift so it's a legendary artifact equipment that only costs one and an equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each what counter on it <laughs> equipped permanent isn't a planeswalker and is a creature in addition to its other types loyalty abilities can still be activated oh my god so you can equip it to a planeswalker for one or you can equip it to a creature for three uh so clearly it wants you to, you know, throw this onto Elspeth or any other planeswalker that you have and do just an you know, enormous amount of different shenanigans. Um, go to town. Yeah. Go to town. <laughs> I, I, I think yeah. I, I don't even, I don't think we do there, there's numerous ways to talk uh, of that you can abuse it, so probably we can talk about that somewhere else. Or, you know, feel free to bring it up if you guys have any ideas. But yeah, I, I think this is clearly... Maybe the, the question thing. is saying, how to use this? is more, how do you prevent other people from using <laughs> this? <laughs> oh, we need ideas do, do to want, protect ourselves. Do make that the question for the video? Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. How do you stop how this? How do you stop Luxio? Yeah, yes. Oh, I just realized, does Urza Saga work to fetch this out, right? Because it's one CMC. Shut up! Or does it have to have a mana ability? I, I keep, I'm forgetting what Urza, Urza Saga is. Urza one to cast. Just, yeah. Like, one or less. Just two for one to cast, and it doesn't have any like, one or requirements, less. right? Yeah. Yep. Damn. I, I, I thought we were asking how to stop oh, it, not, not how to encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, yeah, who invited you, you today? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. All right. M- moving along, moving along. Let's go on next. All right. My second pick, another vehicle. This is an unlicensed hearse. Uh, so two, uh, two CMC for a Star Star vehicle. Uh, you can tap it to exile up to two cards from a single graveyard. So... Good graveyard removal or graveyard hate. Unlicensed hearse's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards exiled with it. When I look at vehicles, I usually just look at the baseline. If, if it's not a vehicle, is it still functional? And you know, exiling cards from a graveyard just by tapping it seems pretty uh, uh like a pretty decent effect for two CMC. I think so. Yeah, and, it's you know, not too bad. It stays on the board. You know, it gets more. It, it gets bigger than just additional benefit than. So yeah, those were my two picks. Uh, who wants to go next? All right, I'll go Mark? next. Yeah. Um, I guess we don't need to spend more time yeah. on Xero. Um, <laughs> my second pick is actually a uncommon, Scuttling Butler. 
uh, <laughs> artifact creature construct, three CMC. Um, at the beginning of combat on, on your turn, if you can show two or more multicolor permanents, Scuttling Butler gains double strike until end of the turn. So I figure he's a 4 1 double strike on turn four. I guess that's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, in the multicolor deck. That can and be very you, useful. Yeah, you probably have a multicolor deck by that point. Um, well, you have a soul ring, it might be even quicker. Exactly. So. Um, well, you, you still need to control multicolored permanent, so I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Like two, you know. Probably need a couple turns to probably a couple turns to have that on board. So but turn, once it's on board, that's a pretty powerful effect. Yeah, turn three optimized, turn four if you're not optimized. Yeah, but still pretty good for four one at that point yeah. or eight eight one actually. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So I guess Joseph, why don't you go to like next? yeah. So again, because uh, Carlos and land the options are limited. I'm yeah. I'm assuming any of the trio lands are pretty good. So right. instead, I went with a common land. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, Cabaretti Courtyard. So it says, whenever it enters battlefield, sacrifice it. When you do, search your library for a basic mountain forest plains, put it into battlefield, tap, then shuffle, and you gain one life. Again, I feel like these are pretty uh, nice addition to the whole landfall yeah. aspect. Because oh, definitely that's very good. You technically have two land triggers just by having this come into yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, so it's a little bit different than you know the, the usual fetch that's, lands, yep. right? Because fetch lands, you usually wait till the end of your opponent's turn, and then you do it at the end of their end step. This one, it does it during your turn, yep. uh, which... You know, for casual play, is probably better because you're spending less time shuffling while right, <laughs> while people are waiting for you to start your turn. But yeah. anyway, so it's good a effect. good effect. Yep. I didn't think about the landfall. That's good. Yeah, that's good to know. Yep. Yeah. So the second one is brass knuckles. Uh, four to cast. Uh, uncommon artifact equipment. When you cast a spell, cop it, copy <laughs> it. So you basically you're paying four mana to have two of these brass knuckles. Yes. Equip creature has double strike as long as two or more equipment are attached to it, and equip cost is one. So. Um, for equipment deck, I think it's pretty yeah. nice because you just put it on. You get two of them. You put on, you know, two separate creatures with, or you put on one creature. Um, you get double strike. Oh, Definitely double strike with brass knuckles. Yep. Yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah. All right. And I think that's it for all yeah. seven slots. Yep. I mean, we didn't pick any of the trial lands, but those are pretty good. So <laughs> yeah, as, as you've already seen from my Korea. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I think those are pretty yeah. uh, like, self given because think about it, even with the Cabaret courtyard, theoretically you can find a trio. Oh, you're right. Trium oh, never mind, because it says basic. Never mind. Oh, it says basic. Yeah, yeah, basic. Yeah. My okay. bad. Yep. Yeah. False alarm. <laughs> but those lands are still good. Yeah, still good. Yep. It wasn't in our picks, but it's it's one of those, like, you know, you're, you're, you're going to need it anyway. Right. Yeah. I definitely run a lot of decks with those the Ikoria lands. But I do feel like that, uh, that's, that gift is the will be the prize for the slot. Right, yes. exactly. <laughs> so yes. I, think, I think it makes sense to combine the slots. Because your... it's such a... Yeah, it's a nice little... Uh, good to have you know uh thing to kind of look for if we get it and if not you still get the lands yep uh that will usually show up makes sense. our box breaks all right so i uh, hope you uh all enjoyed this uh our top two picks and um that's it or should we talk about our, oh. our uh, question well before that i think uh i'm not sure if we mentioned already so this uh, streets of new Compendium releases april 29th so that's coming up pretty soon I believe we're gonna have our listings and our um, uh, and our website updated. Yep. Uh, so please, you know. I think as of this video, when this video is released, we'll have it up yep. on the website or yeah. and on uh, eBay. Yeah. Please and join then, us for our next box breaks. This yeah. It'll be an exciting set, I think. So if you buy it during pre-order um, before the set releases, again, ten percent off, um, like how we've done on the other sets. Yes. So get them early, and uh, yeah. yeah, looking forward to those breaks. Yep. So going back to the question then, so uh, how we'll, to stop? Yeah, Luxio. We'll, we'll, yeah give us some. Uh, <laughs> give us your best way of stopping. Other Luxio. than countering yeah. <laughs> or exiling, I guess. Yeah. 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 Some creative ways to uh, prevent it from killing you. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, I think that's it. That's it. Thanks. Yep. Thank Thanks. You. All right. Uh, just to go over our inventory really quickly for Kimigawa Neon Dynasty. Uh, we have a set box with seven slots left. We have a collector box with five slots left for Time Spiral Remastered. We have a draft box with seven slots left. For Commander Legends, we have a draft box with six slots left. And uh, I think it's time to do the giveaway. So I'm going to copy the set price monitor video link over to Comet Picker. Good luck, everybody. Don't think we have a set question for this one, so 
to see what we get. Christopher Yu, I am so excited for Streets of Capenna. I think we're too. Um, hope you like the top two video. Love those shards ever since I started Magic, so getting more support for those colors is always appreciated. All right, so that's going to be coming up soon. So we're looking forward to some box, box breaks there. Um, well, that's all for what we have today. So see you next time.